good evening to everyone so in this session we will see the remaining questions from the level 2 and then uh, we'll continue even the questions from the level 3 so the first question from the level 2 uh, here is a 75th question match list 1 with the list 2 and choose the correct option so here we have uh, uh, two lists so the list 1 will ha is having organisms and the list 2 is having excretory structures so the first one uh, let's see the cockroach so cockroach is an insect in which you find the excretory organs will be the malphigian uh, tubules then clarius so here uh, clarius batracus is name of a fish that is the scientific name of a fish uh, that is commonly called the catfish right so in the case the catfishes have uh, kidneys as the excretory organs now coming to the earthworm in case of earthworm the nephridia are the excretory structures then coming to okay uh, the balanoglossus in case of uh, balanoglossus uh, this is an organism that belongs to phylum Cordae, I mean, so it belongs to, I'm sorry, hemicordata. It belongs to phylum hemicordata. So this one has uh, a proboscis gland which helps in excretion of nitrogenous uh, wastes. Then the last one is the flatworms. So in case of uh, flatworms, the excretory structure so these uh, will be having protonephridia and the examples of protonephridia is a uh, flame cells so here the option d okay so they have uh, the flame cell so uh, it's a b c a e d so that one when you see b c a e d the b option uh, will be the right option in this case now let's see the next question the next question is a uh, human kidney is covered by peritoneum only on the ventral side so it is called so here uh, let's see uh, when we take this as the ventral side okay and this will be the dorsal side so where the vertebral column will be present so dorsal side and uh, this is the v stands for the ventral side so that is the front side of our body and this is the back side so where we find uh, the vertebral column so now here uh, on this dorsal side we find the attachment of okay kidneys so here we'll see the attachment of uh, kidneys so this is a kidney here okay and there is a peritoneum a thin membranous okay layer and this will be usually the dorsal side will be covered by that peritoneum and the peritoneum will not be able to cover the whole organ so it will be a covering only on one side of the kidney so that is the ventral side of the kidney so this is peritoneal layer so it's called peritoneal layer okay and this peritoneal layer usually it will be present okay covering all over the organs but this kidney is as it is attached to the dorsal side so it will be able to cover only on the ventral side of the kidney so because of that these kidneys are called retroperitoneal organs so they are called retroperitoneal organs so the human kidney covered by peritoneum only on the ventral side so this is the ventral side okay and this is the dorsal side 
right the peritoneal layer covers only on the ventral side so such condition uh, we call it retroperitoneal organs so no uh, not uh, abdominal or nor uh, peritoneal or thoracic so these will be okay not correct and only the right a option will be the right answer in this case so right the next question question number 84 the principal nitrogenous excretory compound in human is synthesized so we know that okay so the excretory products you know uh, whatever that uh, ammonia is produ produced will be converted to urea and this whole process takes place in okay in on the time cycle okay so this is the excretory waste that is uh, produced okay in the liver and it will be eliminated by eliminated by so these are the excretory organs so they are called the excretory organs okay so let's see the first option in kidneys as well as eliminated by kidneys no so it is not okay eliminated by kidneys is correct but not synthesized in the kidneys so the second option in liver and also eliminated by the same through the bile so we know the bile have a different composition so it has uh, the bile okay pigments which will be bilirubin and biluviridin the products of breakdown of uh, rbc's and we have bile salts which will help in uh, emulsification of fat so uh, this option is also not the right option the next coming in the liver but eliminated mostly through the kidneys yes so in the liver but eliminated mostly through the kidneys is the right answer we'll see the d option in kidneys but eliminated mostly through the liver uh, it is not correct so the option c will be the right answer for this the next question question number 88 increase in frequency of urination is called so here i would like to make a change in the b option so it is not uh, urea it should be i a so p o l y u r i a polyurea so make a correction uh, in your metal not uh, u r e a so now let's see uh, the meanings of this right uh, the urea i mean uremia which means uh, excess urea in the condition and coming to this glycuria which means excess glucose in blood and proteinuria so proteinuria is excess okay protein dent in blood now here coming to the polyuria is increase in frequency of uh, urination so increase in the frequency of urination is a condition we call it polyuria so not urea it should be uria it is called polyuria so increase in frequency of urination is called polyuria is the right option and uh, you can consider this uh, when the urination takes place right more than 2.5 to 3 liters per day so if uh, there is more than 2.5 to 3 liters per day we know the normal okay condition is 1 to 1.5 liter per day is the normal urination and here if this urination is more than 2.5 to 3 liters per day then this condition is what we call it the polyuria right the next question is which one is not uricotelic so we know uh, the meaning of uh, uricotelic so uricotelic which means elimination 
which means elimination of uh, nitrogenous wastes elimination of nitrogenous wastes in the form of in the form of okay uric acid in the form of uric acid then we call okay those organisms as uricotelic so now uh, when we see these options in these options okay cockroach so cockroach will eliminate the nitrogenous wastes in the form of uh, okay uh, uric acid so it eliminates nitrogenous wastes in the form of uric acid the lizard which uh, belongs to reptiles the reptiles also release excretory wastes in the form of uh, uric acid and the birds the apes they also release the nitrogenous wastes in the form of uh, uric acid so while coming the frog so the frog okay eliminates the nitrogenous wastes so in the form of a uh, right urea so it releases the nitrogenous wastes in the form of urea so whereas it's a tadpole so the tadpole uh, okay uh, the larval stage of the frog will eliminate the nitrogenous wastes in the form of uh, ammonia so it releases in the form of ammonia so it is a aminotelic the tadpole is a aminotelic whereas the adult that is a uh, frog will be uh, eliminating the nitrogenous wastes in the form of urea hence it is uh, ureotelic so now the question is which one is not uricotelic means out of this which one is not uricotelic so the frog which is uricotelic will be the uh, right answer because uh, except this all others are uh, uricotelic animals so the option a will be the right the next question so maximum number of microvilli occur in so here uh, the dct we know it stands for distal convoluted tubule okay so the next one proximal convoluted tubule so here uh, in pct so in pct most of reabsorption most of reabsorption occurs so the reabsorption of uh, you know substances like uh, glucose right then ions and then amino acids so etc of them takes place so hence in pct there are lined by okay epithelial cells so if we see the pct so we see here okay epithelial cells lining so we can see here epithelial cells lining and these epithelial cells will show okay the finger like uh, projections and what we call them as the microvilli because we know the function of the microvilli is to increase uh, the surface area for absorption so you can see here so there are lot many microvilli so these are epithelial cells okay lining the PCT so lining the PCT okay and they have right structure so these uh, finger like uh, uh, projections what we see so these are all called microvilli so the microvilli help in increasing so help in increasing uh, reabsorption I mean uh, help in increasing uh, surface area
surface area for okay absorption so that is the function of uh, right these uh, microvilli in the pct so you can say uh, this is the direction of the filtrate okay moving down right and you see most of the reabsorption occurs uh, you know uh, with the some glucose molecules ions and amino acids etc so most of the reabsorption occurs in the pct so for which uh, it requires this microvilli just like how we have seen in case of a small intestine so the answer the maximum number of microvilli they occur in pct so proximal convoluted tubule not in uh, henley's loop nor in the collecting duct the next question how many molecules of ammonia are required to form eight molecules of uh, urea so here actually uh, two molecules of ammonia is required to form uh, one molecule of uh, urea so when you see the structure i mean uh, the chemical uh, structure of urea so you will find okay uh, two amino groups right so that is uh, two molecules of ammonia required to form urea so here uh, he asked uh, eight molecules of urea formation so uh, one urea requires two ammonia molecules so hence uh, eight into two you get 16 so the answer in this case 16 molecules of ammonia are required to form eight molecules of urea so answer is 16 the next question is inner lining of the kidney has so here uh, first option is about these uh, nephrocytes so these nephrocytes are specialized cells so they are specialized cells okay especially in arthropods so they are present in arthropods and what is the function of these nephrocytes in arthropods they are meant for either accumulation or the formation of form of wastes so that's the function of uh, right nephrocytes now coming to the coinocytes so here uh, the coinocytes are found in the okay inner lining of right uh, the peripherence so uh, i mean in case of uh, sponges so the cells uh, will have a collar okay so hence uh, these coinocytes are also called the collar cells so you can see you will find a uh, flagellum so so here is a uh, flagellum and this is the Cola, uh, these coinocytes will help in uh, right capturing the food so the function in this case so helps in capturing food so in case of uh, these uh, sponges or peripherans so now uh, the another one is about amoebo sites so here uh, the amoebo sites are also called archaeo sites so these uh, amoebo sites or archaeo sites uh, are also seen in case of uh, peripherans so seen or present in right sponges 
and these archaeocytes are actually totty potent cells okay uh, so if, uh, i hope uh, you remember about the gemmules uh, so the porifers who reproduce by asexual method so in case of that gemmules so they inside that they are filled with these amebocytes or archaeocytes and these uh, are totipotent cells and they are capable of uh, right giving rise to the whole organism right so that's uh, the amebocytes or archaeocytes now coming to the podocytes so we know that the podocytes are the cells that will wrap around the right the capillaries in glomerulus so if you this is the capillary okay and you will find the okay so say this is the podocyte and you can see here so it's so it has uh, the cytoplasmic uh, extensions so that will help in uh, completely wrapping around the capillary wall so here is its uh, nucleus and this is the podo site and in between this uh, we find here there are slits so these are called the slit ports so in our uh, previous sessions uh, we have seen okay so this is the capillary and you can see the blood okay uh, which flows now so these podocytes will be lining okay uh, on the inner side of the kidney right so podocytes are epithelial cells of uh, Bowman's capsule right and they help in filtration of the blood so the answer inner lining of a kidney has podocytes so answer is podocytes the next question is 98 that's a uh, question number okay 98 erythropoietin is uh, secreted from so uh, the options pituitary gland kidney pancreas and adrenal gland okay uh, so here erythropoietin is a glycoprotein cytokine so actually this is a hormone so this is a hormone and it is a okay glycoprotein cytokine and this erythropoietin is uh, produced from kidneys so it is produced by kidneys in response to in response to hypoxia conditions in response to hypoxia conditions so here hypoxia is okay inadequate uh, amount of oxygen in the body so it is in adequate amount of oxygen so if the cells don't get enough oxygen the condition we call it hypoxia conditions and that will trigger the kidneys to produce this uh, hormone called erythropoietin and this erythropoietin in response to these uh, hypoxia conditions okay so it helps uh, this erythropoietin will be released and this erythropoietin uh, plays so the erythropoietin plays a role in 
erythropoiesis so it plays a role in erythropoiesis so it is erythropoiesis the meaning of this erythropoiesis is the production of rbcs it is the production of rbcs is called erythropoiesis to compensate okay uh, this inadequate, inadequate supply of uh, oxygen so the erythropoietin is uh, secreted from the uh, kidneys will be the right option so uh, in the later sessions we will see of course pituitary gland also produces some hormones pancreas also produces hormones and adrenal gland also produces hormones so in our uh, coming sessions we will study about what are all the hormones produced by the pituitary gland and their functions okay in the coming session so so erythropoietin here uh, i'll just give that the answer erythropoietin is secreted from uh, kidney the next question uh, question number 100 the juxta glomerular apparatus uh, consists of so we know here uh, this juxta glomerular apparatus in short it is called uh, jga so now uh, let us see this jga app i uh, mean the jg just a glomerular apparatus it consists of it consists of three types of cells so it consists of three types of cells one macula densa cells then second one will be juxta glomerular cells and the third one will be the extra glomerular so the third one extra glomerular mesangial the extra glomerular mesangial cells so if we see here the macula densa cells are uh, present in the dct the distal convoluted tubule the juxta glomerular cells you will see in the case of uh, the afferent arteriole so it's present in case of afferent arteriole okay whereas this uh, extra glomerular mesangial cells will be present outside this uh, glomerulus so you'll see uh, actually where uh, it comes okay so this is the bowman's cup and moving into it is the efferent and coming out is the efferent arteriole so this is the efferent arteriole and this one is efferent arteriole right and uh, very close to this uh, okay we find uh, so very close to this we find is distal convoluted tubule so here you will find the distal convoluted tubule and in this uh, distal convoluted tubule so here you can see it's lined by cells and some cells in this are specialized okay and those are called 
the macula densa cells so you can see here so these are the macula densa cells okay so here so this is a lumen of dct and here all these cells you see are the macula densa cells so here you find the macula densa cells and uh, okay so located uh, in between this you find here some okay uh, cells and these are called okay uh, extra glomerular mesangial cells so these are called extra glomerular mesangial cells right and located inside the afferent arteriole so here you find the jg cells so these are the jg cells the juxta glomerular cells now the other name for this extra glomerular okay mesangial cells they are also called okay lasis cells also called lasis cells so also called polkisen cells polkisen okay cells okay are uh, also called i'm just i will write here on the top called gurmatai okay so also called okay gurmatai cells so these are all the different names for just extra glomerular cells lasis cells okay polkin cells or gurmatai cells okay so these uh, are also the type that comes under the juxta glomerular apparatus okay so the juxta glomerular apparatus consists of okay the glomerular cells right we have seen here the glomerular cells are present then macula densa yes the macula densa is also present then the lasis cells which are also called extra glomerular okay mesangial cells are also present so uh, right so in this case the first option will be the right option so others so here you can see the argentifine cells you may find uh, one type of cell in intestinal glands chief cells you will see in case of uh, uh, gastric glands and these myoepithelial cells are found in glandular epithelium so the myoepithelial cells are found in glandular epithelium okay so like uh, you may see them in the glands of us uh, i mean sweat glands mammary glands uh, lacrimal glands and also like uh, salivary glands in them uh, you will find these uh, myoepithelial cells okay so uh, the argentifen chief cells and myoepithelial cells are not the part of juxta glomerular apparatus so it is the the lasis cells the macula densa and the juxta glomerular cells will together form the juxta glomerular apparatus so the right option is a the next question is question number 109 excretion in hydra takes place by so here hydra is a organism uh, that belongs to phylum ciliata so it belongs to phylum ciliata 
so in this uh, group of uh, organisms we don't find any excretory structures so there are no flame cells that we usually see in the higher group of animals than this cylindrata in uh, that is uh, platyhelminthes you don't find okay the flame cells you don't find the nephridia and also okay the nidoblast so these nidoblasts are not excretory organs. so they are not excretory organs and uh, uh, their function is uh, to capture the prey so function of these nidoblasts is to capture a uh, prey or in defense so this is the function of these uh, nidoblasts so here uh, these nidoblasts are also called nematocysts they are also called t cells right so hence uh, the excretion in hydra will take place through the general body surface so as they don't have any excretory organ so the right option is through general body surface so that's all the questions from the level 2 now we will see uh, the questions from the level 3 so the next question from the level 3 is a uh, sudden oligouria or anuria is uh, due to what it happens so first uh, let's see what actually is the meaning of uh, okay uh, the oligouria so here in this case uh, low urine output is the condition what we call oliguria and uh, anuria where a means no there is no urine output so not at urine output is in case of anuria condition so such conditions will take place okay when the uh, you know sudden fail of kidneys takes place so that what we call it acute uh, renal failure will be the right answer so chronic uh, means where it is a uh, very long term it takes place okay and the urea which means okay excess urea in blood of course that is due to uh, failure of the kidneys and nephritis is inflammation of nephrons. so the answer is acute renal failure the next question uh, question number 16 so kidney transplantation is an allograft uh, technique and the reason in this uh, technique the kidney from some other individual is taken and grafted so here first we will see what actually is this uh, allograft so we have actually uh, different types of uh, uh, transplantation so totally there are around uh, four types of transplantations so four types of transplantations okay so first one we'll see here is autograft So here in case of uh, uh, autograft, okay, uh, if a person takes the graft from his own body, okay, uh, if the graft is from, okay, same individual. So then we call it uh, autograft, like taking a portion of the skin from the thigh and putting it on the face or uh, anywhere on the body so we call it uh, autograft so the next one the next type is okay isograft so in case of uh, isograft if the graft is okay taken from uh, the other uh, twin uh, in the uh, identical twins so here the graft so if the graft 
is from one of the identical twins okay so then uh, that type of graph we call it uh, isograph then the third type is allograph the third type is allograph in case of uh, allograph okay uh, the graft is taken from an individual okay uh, uh, from of course uh, from an another individual so if graft is from another individual but of same species so but of uh, same species then the condition is called allograft and now the fourth one is xenograft so here in the xenograft uh, the condition is if a person okay takes uh, the graft from okay uh, uh, other individual but doesn't belong to the same species so if the graft is from okay another species like for example uh, the heart from a transgenic pig to a human being so that's we call it uh, the xeno graft right so here the kidney transplantation is an allograftic uh, technique so here we can see allograftic means the kidney is obtained from an another individual but of same species means from another human being hence uh, this statement that is kidney transplantation is an allograft technique is a right statement so here reason in this technique the kidney from some other individual is taken and is grafted so that is what actually the allograft technique means so hence uh, this statement is also right and it is explaining the assertion so hence uh, in this case both a and are true and r explains a so the option a will be the right answer so the next question uh, kidneys are covered by so here uh, we know the kidneys are covered by a peritoneal layer okay so here we'll see so uh, this will be the okay uh, ventral side and the dorsal side okay right and uh, so in between of course we have is the elementary canal so this is elementary canal so here uh, the peritoneum that lines the inner side of the body wall so here you can see uh, this is the peritoneum that lines the inner side of the body wall so this peritoneum that lines the inside of the body wall is called the parietal peritoneum it's called parietal peritoneum and the peritoneum okay uh, that lines the outer side of the okay viscera so you can see here uh, the elementary canal so this is the peritoneal layer that's covering the elementary canal so this uh, we call it visceral peritoneum it's called visceral peritoneum okay so now uh, we know that the location of the kidneys so it's on the dorsal side so we see here okay so i'm just drawing again so this is the dorsal side and uh, the location of the kidney so here say here this is the location of the kidney and 
that is lined by the the parietal peritoneum so you can see the parietal peritoneum so lining here so the kidneys are covered by so para, uh, parietal peritoneum dorsally uh, okay visceral peritoneum okay ventrally and then parietal peritoneum ventrally and visceral peritoneum uh, dorsally so if you see here okay so the answer will be c option so you can see here uh, the kidney's ventral side so this is the ventral side of the kidney so i'll just mention so this side is uh, the ventral side of the kidney is the ventral side of the kidney so here and the back side is the uh, dorsal side of the kidney so that is dorsal side of the kidney and you can see uh, it is on the ventral side of the kidney the para parietal peritoneum is lining it so out of these options uh, the kidneys are covered by parietal peritoneum ventrally so the right option is the c is the right options so with this uh, we'll finish off uh, uh, the objective from the excretory products and their elimination so the remaining questions uh, do it any uh, uh, any questions that are uh, difficult to answer so uh, you can ask me right so in the in the group then in the next session uh, we will start with the, the new chapter that will be uh, the locomotion and movement